All right, hello everybody, and welcome to another elevator parts video. Today we're talking Adam's elevator buttons. We're gonna take a look at a couple different call stations, we're gonna take a look in depth on how these buttons are put together and the different components that make them up, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to wire them. It's a very simple wiring process. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're taking a look at Adam's buttons today. So you can see here, we have a small variety of different Adam's buttons we're gonna take a look at. So before we even get started, let's go ahead and take a look at the two call buttons we have. So the first one here, we have the Adam's WN, just a basic square call button. And you can see this button here on the bottom, it's missing the little cover, but this one has it while this one doesn't. And we have just a single down call station here. Pretty simple. This is a very common um, piece to see on like an elevator modernization. Now, if we go ahead and turn these over, we're gonna notice something common about all of these buttons. And you can see they have a very similar base here. So I've got a few of these Atom Survivor bases. If we take a close look at the top there, you can see it says Adams Survivor on it. And all of these bases actually say Adams Survivor. So this is the Adams Survivor base. And if we take a closer look at the base, you can see this little white piece here. This is the actual button. This is the part that presses down. We have the little frame here on the side. We have these little holes here to mount it to the plate. Kind of turn it on its side. We can look at the contacts here. See, we've got some metal little metal contacts here. We got the little thin pieces of metal connected to the button. So when you press down on it, you can see it makes the contacts there. Now each base has two separate switches. You can see there's one on this side. These two connect together and these two connect together. We also have a space on the bottom where a lamp socket will go. And here's what the lamp sockets look like. They've got just a standard little 120 volt bulb in it and they slide down into the hole like this and lock into place. And then you can give them a little tug to pull them out again to switch the bulb. Now this is the base you would see on all of the buttons. I also have a base here, which is a little bit different. This is for a fire service light. You can see this one does not press. Now if we pull the cover off, we can see inside. It has the exact same look as the button, but you can see that the plastic piece here is actually secured on there. What I find kind of interesting is how it has the contacts for it and even the springs in there, but yet it doesn't press. Now this one's a little bit different. If we flip it over, you can see it actually has an EPCO circuit board. And there's these little connectors here where you can hook up the, the light and the switches. But in this case, we would only use the light. And down in there, there's two small LEDs. Now, if you saw here, I pulled off the button cap. Another thing I have here is a shoe button. Now, if I pull this one off, you can see this one also has your standard survivor base. Now, this is what the Adams caps look like. And these can be placed onto literally any survivor base. I can take this button here, the fire button, and lay it on a base and look at this. We now have a fire service hat button. So all the parts here pretty much clip together and work with each other. So it's a very simple button. So if we take a look at the actual button cap, you'll notice there's a little groove right here on the bottom. And if you give this a little pull, you can actually pull off the ring and pull out the button. And here's what the button looks like. It's got this little plastic cover on the actual button. And here's the piece where the text would go. In this case, we have the little shoe. And we can cover this back up, lay it back in the base, and place the button cap back on. And now it's all back together, ready to go. So now that we've taken a closer look at the actual buttons, let's take a look at what we're gonna do to these two call stations. Now the one here on the left, this is one of Andrew's pieces from the Elevator's Elevator Museum. And the one on the right here is my call station that Sam gave me. Actually, Sam donated both of these. He gave me this one and Andrew this one. So huge thanks to Sam uh, for these, these fixtures. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be simply just wiring up Andrew's to light up different colors when you press the, the buttons. And now mine, as I said before, I have the shoe button here. And I'm thinking, you know, this is pretty common to see an arrow. So I was thinking we're going to make a shoe button call station. And if I ever decide to change it out, I can just pull off the button and put something else in there. We'll start off with my call station here. So you can see here we have just the simple down arrow. And this is actually one of the older contacts. And I'll show you why when I open this up. To take the button off the base, you simply just have to loosen the nut on either side and the whole button assembly will remove very easily. On the back here, you can see there is a little wiring diagram for how to wire one of these buttons. And on this side, we have a few other stickers here. So here's the plate without the button. And if we take a look at the button itself, here's the Adams button. Now, something interesting about this button cap is you can see it's a lot different. It doesn't have a little piece that comes off. There's actually these four little clips and you have to press all of them in to take the actual button out. So this is kind of interesting how it's a little different. Now, for the purpose of this video, we're going to be placing the shoe button on there. Now, you can see here, the orientation of the contact is 
like this. So we need to open up the shoe button and switch it. That's pretty simple. Just push it like that and turn it. You can see there, now we have a shoe button on there. So while I have the button off, you can see there's a little bit of gunk and a little bit of dirt on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this thing up and make it look a little bit nicer before we put the button together and start wiring it. All right, so we have the little shoe button put in here now. So if you are looking to wire a single Adams button like this, this is gonna be the part for you. If you are looking for a intermediate Adams station, that will be later on in the video because we'll be wiring that soon. But for now, we're gonna show you how to wire this. Okay, so the parts you will need to wire up this Adams is pretty simple. You need some sort of LED. You can use whatever color you'd like. You're also going to need some sort of power supply. In this case, using a three volt battery pack because this LED is a three volt LED. Now obviously, you're gonna wanna adjust your power pack to what voltage your LED is. Now you're also going to need some sort of wire because you're gonna have to connect a couple contacts together on the back here. But most likely, you're probably gonna have some wires hanging off the back, which are perfectly usable. So if you have, if you don't have wires on the back, you'll have to come up with some sort of wire because we're gonna be connecting, you know, like one of these middle contacts here to the edge. So you don't need a lot of wire, just something long enough where you can connect two of these contacts together. So another nice thing about this project is since everything is just tightened down with screws, you won't need to do any soldering, you won't need to do anything fancy. This is probably one of the easiest buttons you can wire. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is remove your lamp socket because we're not gonna use it anymore. You can hang on to it, do whatever you want with it. I always just put my extra lamps in this little bin. And once you remove the lamp socket, you're gonna wanna take all these pesky wires off. Now don't get rid of them. As I just said, you're gonna wanna use them. Just get a small slotted screwdriver and we're just gonna loosen these up and pull the wires off. Now once you pulled the wires off, you'll see you have a nice clean button. Now the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna take out these little metal connectors. And this is what would actually make contact with your bulb. And, and just because we're using an LED on this, we just kinda wanna get rid of these because they block the way. It's not required that you take them off, I just prefer to remove them so you have a more open space to place your LED. Just remove the screw completely from, one of the, from the side and you can pull up on the metal piece and it'll come right out. Now once you've removed the two little metal pieces, you're ready to start wiring. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna locate one of the contacts on the button. The contacts for the button are the ones on the opposite sides of the little lamp socket. You don't wanna go across, you wanna go opposite sides. So what you're gonna wanna do is choose a side that you wanna work with. In this case, we're gonna use the left side. I'm gonna take the red end of my battery pack, slide it underneath the connector here, and tighten it down. Tighten it down enough where it makes a nice solid connection. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna take one of your other wires, this is one that came off the button, and we're gonna put one of the ends underneath this pin right here. All right, once you've gotten your wire attached in there and nice and secure, what we're gonna wanna do is focus on putting in our LED now. If we take a look at our LED, you can see we have these nice long metal pieces on the side. And what we can do is if we kind of lay our LED in the middle and bend these two pins down on either side, we can clip them underneath these contacts. And we can complete the circuit by adding a wire here and then bringing our black wire over here. Next, what you're gonna do, take your LED, then you're gonna bend the ends of the LED 90 degrees in opposite directions. It'll give you something that looks kind of like this. Then what you wanna do is you wanna locate your positive and your negative side of your LED. Now the way you can do that is by looking for the little flat side of the LED. And in this case, it's this side right here. Now your flat side is your negative side. So what you're gonna wanna make sure you do is place your negative side away from your wire. So in this case, we're placing this wire here. We wanna put our positive end on this pin and our negative end here. So now we're gonna place in our LED. And it helps to take both the screws out of the button so we can have plenty of room to lay the LED in there. So again, you're gonna to wanna to load your negative side and place it accordingly on the bottom here. Then what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to place the screws back in. Don't tighten it all the way, but at least get it so that the LED is in place. As you can see here, we have the ends of the LEDs placed underneath our little screws. You wanna slide the wire down with the LED and we're gonna tighten it up. Make sure it's nice and tight in there and nice and secure. Then you're gonna to wanna to take the negative, the black wire of your battery pack and place it underneath the other side over here and tighten it down. Again, make sure it's nice and secure. 
Then what you're gonna wanna do is take your screwdriver and just kinda center your LED in there because you can see it's kinda pushed off to the side right now and you're done. That's all there is to it. The next thing you need to do, place some batteries in. All right, once you've added your batteries, go ahead and flip your button over and give it a test. Look at that, it works. That looks really cool too. So there we go, there's how to wire a terminal call station. So now, let's go ahead and put this one to the side and we're gonna bust out the big boy. So, if you're looking to wire an intermediate Adams call station, this is the part for you. All right, now for the intermediate call station, it's gonna be the same kind of idea as the first call station. Again, for the parts you'll need, some LEDs. Now, since we have two buttons now, we want two LEDs. We're also gonna need a power supply, in this case, three volts. We also have a lot of wires. This one has a lot, a lot of wires on it, but the first thing you wanna do is just take all of the wires off and remove the lamp sockets too, because there's one right there. Okay, so we removed all of the wires out of the buttons. So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the little metal clips for the old lamp sockets in here. Okay, so we've removed the little clips and we have these open spots now. So now we're gonna get started with the wiring of this. So as I said earlier with the contacts, we're going from top to bottom here on the contacts. So the two switches are these two and these two. You don't wanna go across like this, you wanna go up and down. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our battery pack and we're gonna place the red wire from our battery pack in there. Now before we tighten down this screw, we're also gonna to wanna to take another wire and we're gonna add it in here. We're gonna use this to bring our positive side from this switch down to this one as well. So we're pretty much gonna mirror what we do on this side over here. So add the other wire underneath with your battery pack and then go ahead and tighten it down. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this wire and place it on this side on the other switch. And I'm gonna go ahead and press the wire down to the side so it's out of the way. And the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna get another wire. This time you maybe get a little bit of a shorter wire. And what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna place that wire on the bottom on the other side of the contact. You're gonna wanna place your wire in here and tighten it down. And you're gonna wanna do the same thing on the other side. And there we go, we have our two wires attached on either button. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna work with our LEDs. We can actually bend the two sides down so if we just bend these 90 degrees on either way, we can actually lay the LED across here and then tighten down the screws to make a contact. Make sure the negative side is on the right side here because we're bringing the positive current to the left side. So simply lay your LED in here across the two metal pins and then take your screws and place them in there. Now don't tighten them down all the way because we need to add some wires. Okay, so I went ahead and put in the LEDs on both sides. You can see we've got the one on this side and the green one on this side. I haven't tightened down these screws yet because we need to add some wires. What you're gonna wanna do is the wires that you've added here, place this on the left side of the LED. And you wanna do this on both buttons. So you can see here, we've done the two wires on each side. I'm gonna go ahead and just press these down on the sides here to kind of contain the wires and organize them a bit more. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to get the negative side of our battery pack onto the negative side of our LED. Now in addition to placing the negative end on here, we need to take another wire and we need to connect this end over here to the negative end on the other button. Okay, I've went ahead and connected the negatives together. We have our negative battery going in on this side and our wire coming to the other side. Add a couple batteries to the battery pack and give it a test. So now if we give the buttons a press, you can see the up lights up green and the down lights up pink. And they look pretty cool. So there we go, we have wired up these Adams buttons. Over here you can see we have the nice kind of warm white over here. And we have our pink and green for our intermediate call station. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video about wiring and taking a detailed look at the Adams elevator fixtures. Hope you learned something, hope you found it useful. And as always, leave you guys' other elevator part video ideas down in the comments below. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.